Can you imagine? Have you ever put yourself in that courier and Ives print? I think most every single one of us have seen a newborn. I think most all of us have held a newborn. No sanitary nursery. The smells of that perfect, fresh flesh mixed with the manure of sheep and camels. The fresh cut hay and all of its allergens. How many of you ladies would like to give birth in a chicken house? That's Mary's reality. As we gather at this time of year in our festivities and our celebrations, when we pause and reflect, It's about finding a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. A baby brings nothing but hope. A baby brings nothing but potential. And those that gathered around that cradle the first time genuinely had no idea how that script was going to play out. People today desperately trying to correlate Isaiah and Daniel and Revelation and Matthew 24 trying to get some grasp on what happens next as though our knowledge would change the march of history. We can control it no more than we can control the weather. But just like knowing the weather having some insight on what's coming helps us to dress appropriately. And that baby, when he grew up, would lead twelve men, one of which would betray him. You ever think about the depth of that pain? Most of us have been betrayed by an enemy. Some of us may have been betrayed by family or friend. How many of us have truly been betrayed by an intimate friend? That man would fall away and others would take his place. And those twelve individuals would go on to reshape human history by introducing the church around the world. Have you ever stopped and think about who came to see the baby? I mean, most obviously, mom. Every image has Mary sitting by the cradle. And Joseph, a man who, as we spoke last week, had absolutely no reason to be there. But in his integrity, chose to see through the impossible task 
of being stepdad to God incarnate. Demonstrated His value and worth in being a godly dad. A simple man. A simple girl. Just like you. Just like me. There's nothing special about Joseph or Mary. Except they were the ones that God chose to use. Shepherds watching their flocks in field by night. The lowest of the low in the ancient Near Eastern culture. Shepherd. Have you ever been around sheep? Sheep do not have a pleasant aroma. Neither do the men who sit with them. You could smell a shepherd before you saw him. And they were not really welcome. It's kind of like how we sometimes denigrate trash collectors. But oh, do we need their work. Shepherds. Stop and think about that, friends. The very first people to hear the announcement of the hope of all eternity were the lowest of the low. Some 18 months later, long after the smell of the manger had washed off. Joseph and Mary were in a home. The Bible clearly records that the wise men came to the house. So yeah, the nativity sitting in my front yard is wrong. There were no wise men at the cradle. Because they had walked from Iran and Iraq. They were Persians. Magi. The Persian word for wise men or satraps. Forget for a moment three men. Not true. The Bible records three gifts. And if you were transporting the most valuable commodities in the world in an era before the Brinks truck was invented, you don't take gold, frankincense, and myrrh across some of the worst robber territory in the world unguarded. So you're talking about a complete group. Not just three guys and their camels. Those three guys would have been high ups. You ever seen the governor or president come into an area? How many folks are around them for security, for interaction, for liaison, for... These three gifts were carried by a group of stargazers. Most likely, from the ancient and still current in some places, religion of the Zoroastrians. Worshipped the stars. And they were aware of a tale in the Jewish Scriptures that there would be a king that would come to Israel who would shape the world. And they saw his star. By the way, the 
in the east is where they saw the star from. Because they were in the east. They saw his star in the east and went to where he lay, which would have been west. They left probably about the time that he was born, which is why it's 18 months later at the earliest that they arrive in Herod's court. What drew a bunch of stargazers? What drew a bunch of shepherds? What grew what drew Joseph and Mary? All of Israel. You and me. Hope. Joy. Love. These ideas that are in this icon of the candles. In this icon of the cradle. And in this icon of the cross. Symbols, every one. None of them more important or less important than the others. A few moments ago, Sherry thought through some prospect of the darkness and evil that was in the world then. And the fact that it hasn't seemed to get any better. So much for the theory that man improves over time. Most of you would be absolutely offended and scandalized if I were to reach down in this cradle and pick up this baby and nail it to this cross. But Jesus was more innocent than any baby ever has been. And it is because He gave His life. It is because He came to bear our sin. It is because of His love for us we celebrate. I'm okay with Christmas trees. And I love me some candy and punch and Christmas party food. I think it's an excellent tradition that we exchange gifts in remembrance of the Magi. It's always confused me, though, why we're giving each other presents at somebody else's birthday. Which, okay, shameless plug, is why we have the birthday for Jesus out here in the foyer, where you can buy Gideon Bibles and give them away as a gift to Jesus that nobody else gets. Because think about it. Have any of us gotten Jesus anything for His birthday? Or has it been about everybody else? He gave His life that we might live. The only thing He's ever asked for is our life in return. And even trade. His innocence for our sin. His eternity for our death. You see, these two images are inextricably linked. The cradle means nothing without the cross. Everybody's been born. And the cross means nothing without the humanity 
of the cradle. It is that God became flesh and brought light into the darkness, and the darkness did not want it. Crucified Him. There were lots of people that had been crucified. Why was this one different? Because this one was God in the flesh. And you know, the simple drums sitting here have had me cracking up all morning. How many of you mothers would let a group of kids come in with drums into your nursery and disturb your baby's sleep? Rum, pum, pum, pum. <laughs> but baby Jesus, like grown up Jesus, appreciated the gift. Y you see, our righteousness, our all the stuff that we can do. This sounds like a bunch of cacophonous drums. But oh, how the Father loves to hear His children play. Guys, as we come to Christmas, it is an invitation. And I want you to know that there is a twofold invitation here. The first is to come and kneel at this cradle and worship the heaven born Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. But it is also important to recognize that he bears those titles because of this cross. And that the only way you and I get the exchange of His life for ours is to kneel at His cradle and to kneel at this cross. And that is a moment in time. But just as we bring the gift of our lives and He gives the gift of eternity, we're broken and we need to be healed. We're damaged and we need to be restored. How in the world do I live in the light of His glory and grace? He answered that with one easy word. Follow. Come, kneel at the cradle, kneel at the cross. Then take it up yourself and walk with it just like he did. Denying himself in honor of his God. We are not to live a life that is filled with rules and regulations. We are to live a life of relationship. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. But you know what a yoke is? The board that goes across the shoulders of one animal to another animal to draw a plow? When I take on the cross, I am yoked with Christ. To walk with the cross of Christ daily is simply to be yoked with Him. And you will find that that burden is light. 
and His demands on you are simple. The only thing Jesus wants from you is permission for Him to heal you. And in healing you, everything in your life will change. We get all wound around the axle about I gotta change this and I gotta stop that and I gotta grow this out and I gotta cut that off. No. When we take on Christ, He does all of that in us, through us, for us. We simply have to be as He was, willing to open ourselves to Him to do what for all eternity He has wanted to do. As we gather around this cradle, some of us are shepherds, the lowest of the low, outcast, marginalized, disillusioned. Others come with power and prestige like the Magi. But it doesn't matter. And whether you're at the top or the bottom, you're welcome. No matter how you see yourself, Christ sees you as His beloved creation. The Father sees you as His beloved child. And here's the really cool thing about God math. When you take on Christ, when He has your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you are in Him, then it is just like God being in the flesh. So we are in Him. And when the Father looks at us, He only sees Jesus. This is the hope of Christmas. I, with all of my sin and failing and degradation, my blasphemies, my rebellion, my self-centeredness, my sin. He became so that I could live righteously. You see, the invitation of Christmas is not to buy one more gift to grow one more Christmas tree, to hang one more decoration. Now or later, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Do it now. Heavenly Father, as we celebrate this Christmas, let us not forget why it was for the peace, the hope, the joy, the love that You intended to share with all mankind. The things that we did not have and could not manufacture, You gave as a gift through the cradle and the cross. Lord God, as we celebrate this day before Christmas in anticipation of the eve that starts very soon, as we enter into this annual celebration and remembrance, may we not be distracted, but may we be wholly drawn to this cradle as a shepherd, as a magi, as a simple man and woman, 
let us come before the Lord our God, our Maker, with all adoration and praise, with the gift of thanksgiving, and the exchange of a life for a life. May we receive your righteousness, and may we welcome you into our lives to make us more righteous to transform us into your image and to create in us a new creation. May that process not end until you bring us home where you will complete it in heaven. You have told us that if we are faithful to confess our sins, you are faithful to forgive them. Lord, may this Christmas remind us of the gift we have been given in eternal life. May this be the annual remembrance of our salvation. And perhaps for some here this morning or listening on the recording, may this be their birthday into the kingdom as they receive what you have so graciously offered, the gift that keeps giving eternally. Christ, our Lord. And it is in His name that we pray. Amen.